I think uh, I think you said the magic words there. I think you said the magic words. I think you said Dabinia. I think we got to I think we got to talk about it. Um, let, let's get into some soccer, baby. So let's chat a little bit about some some rumor news. Let's let's just call it a rumor mill that, that's out there right now. We all know heading into this NWSL offseason that Dabinia was on that free agency list in in this offseason here, probably if not the biggest. Mm-hmm. the absolute main target um, in terms of the talent that is available out there right now in this off season. And we had wondered if there was going to be, um, you know, any type of announcement really before the new year regarding this player and her options, uh, formerly with North Carolina courage has been in the NWSL for, for quite some time now has um, really nothing left to prove. I know you and I were also, you know, we were chatting about this point in time in the year, how we're already about two weeks out from the new year and how somebody like Davinia hasn't essentially either resigned with the courage or found a different team in the NWSL. So what could that mean? And what does that look like for, for this player? And I think it sort of sounds like, She's a player of a certain caliber that is exploring all options in front of her. And I love that. I agree completely. I mean, she was, for me, the biggest name on the NWSL free agency list, hands down. This is a player that is in the prime of her career, Brazilian international. She took North Carolina on her back last year. I mean, they end up winning the Challenge Cup. And then throughout the season, she's in contention for the Golden Boot Race when um, her team wasn't really in contention for the playoffs at that point. And she's still racking up goals, going on tears and going on runs about what this North Carolina team could do throughout this season and just imposing a lot of challenges on their opposition. So the smartest thing for a player like Dabinia to do is to explore every single option. Now, uh, you and I have talked about this as well. There are a lot of perks for Davinia to stay in North Carolina. It's a team she's been with since 2017. Recently, her Brazilian international teammate, Caroline, has signed on with her, and, and that partnership was just flames, fire flames last year to watch those two play together. And I think that it provides a lot of fun for a player like Davinia to be able to combine with someone that is so like-minded with how you're going to play, and you can just feed off of each other and read one another throughout the game. However, she has the leverage being such an incredible athlete and player to use that to her advantage and maybe get a little bit more money out of her contract because that is definitely something she deserves. Maybe play where she wants to play, be under coaches she wants to be with. There's been a lot of talk about where she could go in this league or in the world of women's football right now because it's a type of player that um, – that when you add Dabinia to your midfield, you're changing the way you're playing, right? You can't just go with a, a typical midfield. Um, you have to shift a little bit and lean into what Dabinia can give you. And that means giving her a lot of freedom to roam wherever she wants to go on the pitch, getting into the attack, um, combining, getting goals and, and pushing forward, really kind of cramming space up sometimes for your forwards. But that's what a type of player like Dabinia is going to do. So there are definitely teams that maybe would say, hey, we don't need her at this point. Yeah, we'd love to have her, but that makes us have to change a lot of different things tactically with what we're doing. And we, we're not ready for that yet. But the one of the biggest rumors right now um, is Dabinia heading over to England and, and going to play in the <laughs> Women's Super League. Um, Arsenal, there's been a lot of talks about Arsenal oh, interested man. in Dabinia. What do you think about that? I think it would be perfect. Uh, you know? Listen, I you hate to, to talk about it in, in this aspect in terms of Arsenal and and the impact that they felt from recent injury. Um, they already lost Beth Mead to an ACL and most recently uh, Vivian Miedema. We'll chat a little bit more about that, but I think it's the most glaring hole in um, the roster for for Arsenal. It's like, where's the attack going to come from? Where's where's the offensive production going, um, going to come from? So I... I Listen, I, I don't I would imagine that those conversations or those phone calls or those emails or whatever have escalated maybe to a point where they had it. They maybe weren't uh, prior to, you know, losing some some big names like that. Um, but I think at, at this point, if it's if there's not a ton of chatter around um, the courage or 
maybe a different NWSL side, I would anticipate that the global market is as wide uh, of an option for for to be. For Dabinia as well, so I mean, look at this is not. It wouldn't be. It, it wouldn't be Dabinia's, you know, first time playing in Europe in general. It wouldn't be her first time playing outside of the United States. You know, um, her arrival to to NWSL, you know, came with experiences in, in Brazil, Norway, um, China briefly. So I think we we got to see with her time here. In NWSL, um, we got to witness something very, very special. Um, I think this player grew in ways that, um, you know, maybe she didn't anticipate. I think Brazilian, when you think of Brazilian players, you think of, you know, the the general culture of, of, of Brazilian football and sort of apply that yeah. to those players. You know, like, oh, they could be flashy on the ball. Sometimes very technical, you know, a lot of techers with, with the balls at their feet. But I think what we saw with somebody like Davinia sort of kind of becoming this really all around solid, amazing player. And you're talking about including, um, you know, defensive development for this player, uh, that this was the type of player, a Brazilian player who can, you know, play on, on both sides of the ball here. So to sort of see that development over time, um, with her playing in NWSL, and I'll just say it again, what she's achieved during her time, playing in NWSL we're talking about you know an M an, uh, an MVP finals uh you know title uh, multiple NWSL titles uh has racked up goals has racked yeah. up assists I I don't know and or think that there is anything left to prove for this player in this league um and I think you also have to to keep in mind um you know the career of a certain of, of specific players. They're looking at the timeline and longevity of their careers. And, you know, is this a point in time in Dabinia's career where she's ready for a new challenge or a new environment or wants to achieve something else, especially going into, mm -hmm. um, you know, a world cup year for, for yeah. Brazil where they're ranked, you know, top 10 and can also be considered contenders. Right. So um, I think there's a lot of understandable, um, you know, rumor connecting of the dots, you know, between, yeah. between Arsenal, between the Bigne, it would be like a great fit, I think, in terms for that roster. But is it going to be a great fit for that player? I, there's yes. all those things that come into mind, too. So I'm a little curious if maybe there's additional recruiting going on, you know, like what the Bigne got to, you know, Norway because – she had a teammate there in, in in Rosana, and there was chatter about that. And she got to, and she got to to Norway. You know, is 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 Rafael going to be part of this recruiting for for Arsenal? And is is she going to, you know, ensure that, you know, making good good pitch essentially? You know, try to get her Brazilian you know teammate over there. We'll we'll see. It's it's fun to talk about for sure. It's so fun to talk about. I mean, some of the the rumor teams. Obviously, we've touched on Arsenal and and the fact that they could really use a scoring threat right now. Um, Manchester United, Barcelona, PSG. These are all teams that have expressed interest in a player like Dabinia, as well as several NWSL teams. But like, imagine Dabinia in Champions League right now, playing with the the type of competition that Europe has at this point. Um, everyone joining us live on YouTube, I love hearing what you guys have to say. TJ Trek saying that um, they think that she's going to Europe. We've also uh, got people saying that she's going to England. Lucy giving a shout out to Dabinia and her contract saying it's time to get paid if you are Dabinia. I could not agree more. And Barry Schaefer, of course, our, um, our North Carolina stan that's always with us. Thanks for joining us, Barry. He thinks she's going to stay with North Carolina Courage. I know you would like that, Barry. Um, but it, there's a, a lot to kind of keep track of in terms of where she could go, everything that's happening. And at this point in her career, um, it, is it is she looking towards the end in, in the sense of like, hey, where does she want to finish out her career at that point? I don't think she's quite there yet, right? No, no. I don't think we're at that point. I mean, she's not on the younger side of things. She's 30, 31, I believe. So this is a player that has also experienced a lot of different things. She has played in Brazil. She's now played in the NWSL. She's played in Norway. She's played in China as well, I believe. So I think that going to a European team, um, perhaps in England, that could be a new exciting challenge for her. I know Arsenal would love to pick her up, but um, at this point in the season, like how much more is she going to have to play with them? And then the NWSL season starts again. Like there are just so many factors that come into it. And then of course the world cup, because this is a player that 
um, wants to lift that World Cup trophy at the at the end of August in 2023. Yeah. And, you know, we're, we're look a lot of I think a lot of folks are are throwing Arsenal into the the, the loud ring, you right. know, of, of potential landing spots for Dominion because of what they've gone through on the injury side of things. Gunners losing Minima to an ACL saying she announced that she ruptured her ACL and that's what brought her out of the game against Arsenal during their Champions League matchup on Thursday, December 15th. I think in the moment, you know, watching it happen too was just really, really heartbreaking. Mm -hmm. Just gutted for this player. I, we're, we talk about these athletes and these are people who know their bodies so incredibly well. And you could just sort of see, if nothing else, in the body language of things in the moment that it probably wasn't going to be good news or at the very least was a painful moment for, for Minima. So um, to see her kind of come out of the game and then have have this update from the player of a ruptured ACL, it just it was it was tough. And it also just it just. It, it was another one. I hate to be that way, but it's like this ongoing list of ACL injuries for players globally. This isn't just like, a, you know, continent to continent, country to country kind of thing. It's, it's everywhere. Like it, 2022 has had a massive, massive, um, you know, collection of players who have been dealing with with various ligament injuries, ACL yeah. specifically. I, I've lost count at this point. I know it's got to be over 50 at some point. Mm -hmm. Like it's, it's um, yeah, it's, it's, it's a lot. And I just, there's been a lot of great stuff that's, you know, been written about it out there. I know Samantha S. Lewis has, has some good mm -hmm. stuff. And um, Sam Mewis actually talked a little bit about yeah. uh, climate change and the impact of that on the game and, uh, you could catch that at the athletic. Um, so there's a lot of it's it's on the radar is what I'm saying in terms yeah. of this possibly even I, being considered like, you know, a little bit of an epidemic cross across women's pro sports. I know it's devastating. This is an injury that has unfortunately followed soccer around as one of the sports that um, gets hit with ACLs more than any other sports. And it is often females versus males that get hit with this injury as well. And there are so many ACL prevention um, knowledge and education and resources and PT and strengthening that you can do out there. But uh, there, I think there becomes something deeper when you have over 50 notable women soccer players being hit with this injury, um, all within such a short, short, short amount of time. Um, that's what's crazy between Miedema and, and Mead and then even it, the United States players. There are so many U.S. internationals that have also been hit with ACL injuries just this year. I mean, there's it's devastating and it's really heartbreaking for those players because it's not – such a simple recovery. We know how long it is. Um, we know how difficult it can be. And that's something that I'm, I'm hoping that the sports psychologist people out there and, and sports science people are taking a look at the conditions that these athletes are playing on, whether it's turf, whether it's grass, whether it's hard frozen ground, um, because all of those things play a factor into it. The shoes that the athletes are wearing, whether they're playing soccer and their, their football cleats and their boots that they're putting on or their running shoes. There are just so many factors that come into this. And in order to have these players be at the very top of their game, um, this is something that needs to be taken a deeper look at. And I know there are people out there doing that, but I, it needs to become uh, not 50 people in one year getting hit with this type of injury and, and suffering this. Um, it needs to happen sooner and better with different science or a different look at how these players are training and recovering and they play a lot of soccer, right? They do. And is that a factor of it? Um, I mean, it's devastating. I've had a handful of knee injuries myself and it sucks. It sucks. I'm <laughs> going to be it, very frank. It yeah. sucks. Just to put it lightly, right? It sucks. Yeah. It sucks. You're sidelined from, uh, for these players, their career, their job that they're doing right now, their passion. And not only that, but it's impossible to get around when you're, you're doing that. And now all of your recovery 
um, and all of your time and your energy goes into recovering in PT and getting back to being at the top of your games, an impossible task that seems like it's an incredible uphill battle. Um, but it, in, in a little bit of a transition here, one of the players that has suffered an ACL, Katarina Macario, it has been reported that she is coming back and she's working really hard and she's recovering and she's expected to be back um, yeah. pretty soon at this point. We talk about it in, in towards the end of December, 